Good evening, everybody. Sorry for the slight delay. We had some technical difficulties. Uh, I'd like to call to order the May 12th, 2020 Board of Education meeting. We're going to start with a superintendent's report, um, which is the 2020-2021 budget presentation. Dr. Glass. Thank you and good evening, everybody. Uh, we're going to focus on our budget presentation and I'm going to ask if um, our assistant superintendent Superintendent for Business and Finance, Lisa Sanfilippo, can um, begin pulling up and sharing with you a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I think you'll find that helpful. I'm going to ask that she um, go through this presentation, particularly the first few slides, and then uh, we'll be sort of taking turns walking you through different pieces of it. Um, it's been an unusual budget season, and you're going to find out a little bit, you, you already know a little bit about why, but we'll talk some more about that as we go. Lisa, are you ready? I am. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Good. Okay. Okay. So our first slide is um, the calculation of the property tax cap. Um, so we uh, start with our actual tax levy for this year, and we are allowed to grow that by our tax base growth factor, which is determined by the state based on assessments in the district. And then we have to back out our capital exemptions from this current school year. So we have our capital tax levy and our transfer to capital of 1.5 million. At that point, then we are allowed to add our allowable levy growth factor, which is 1.81% or the CPI. That's what uh, everyone refers to as the tax cap, but as you'll see, that's not actually what our cap ends up being. Then to that number, we add our tax, uh, capital tax levy for the 2021 school year, which is inclu includes all our debt service on our capital debt minus any building aid that we receive from the state. And again, we're planning on a transfer to capital of another 1.5 million for next year. And that brings us uh, down to our total levy, which we're allowed to levy for the 2021 school year. And that is a 1.78 increase over the current school year. And that is what is considered our tax cap. So the next slide shows the estimated tax rate impact of that tax levy increase. And um, if we start with a 1920 school tax bill and you could see the, the various ass assessed values across the top, the average in the East Chester School District is $8,900 for, um, for a home in East Chester. So if, when we apply that increase, we would come to a, um, an annual projected increase of $241 for a school tax bill. And just to note that this does not include any star exemptions. And it also assumes that there's no change in assessed value total in the district so that we can truly see the impact of this tax levy increase on your tax bill. Now, your tax bill will no doubt be impacted by any changes in overall assessed value, but um, that doesn't change what this impact would be to your tax rate. So the next slide is um, where we are in terms of estimated revenue for the 2021 school year right now. And we anticipate that this is gonna change. Um, some of the items that we're taking a big hit for next year are highlighted in yellow here. And uh, we'll go through those a little more in detail on the next slide. So one of our big um, revenue boosts last year was the increase in the county uh, sales tax rate, which we were very excited about, but um, now we believe that in light of the circumstances that our sales tax revenue is probably not going to be what we were hoping it would be. So um, we were originally projecting 1.6 million in sales tax revenue for next year. We're taking that down right now um, by $300,000. So we're showing 1.3 million in sales tax revenue. Although we did receive our first quarter for this year and it did remain unchanged, which was positive. We were anticipating something less, but understanding that it was not reflective of what's going on right now. It was only through March 31st. Um, interest in earnings in the short term, we are estimating that interest is going to remain pretty close to zero for probably at least half of next school year. Uh, while we don't anticipate it's gonna be at zero for the entire school year, that number's been taken down quite a bit. In terms of state aid, um, the state is giving us a budget revision. So we're here on Friday, on May 15th, and this is gonna be based on um, April revenues for the state as of um, April 30th. So we will likely see some sort of reduction in state aid on, um, 
on Friday. So we're waiting to see what that number is going to be. However, we, um, oh, let me, I'm sorry. Um, we are anticipating that any revenue shortfall that we may incur for next year will be, um, we'll be able to cover that with surplus funds that we generated this year um, based on the current year closure. Obviously, we have, we're going to put that money into our fund balance and carry it over to next year. So this is um, this slide represents our state aid, and um, we just thought it might be helpful to kind of see the components of state aid and how they may be impacted going forward. So the first column shows the 1819 actual. That's the um, components of state aid that we actually received last year. Um, as of April 1st, when the state budget was adopted, the blue column shows what we're projecting for this current school year, and the green column shows what was past what the budget that was enacted for next school year. Both of these columns are subject to change um, uh, as of Friday. Uh, not only are we anticipating perhaps that 2021 will be impacted, but it is possible that the 1920 school year will also be impacted. We may have to take a reduction in this school year. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I've got a question. Why is, why is that a negative there? Under the pan why is there a pandemic adjustment negative? If we're getting additional monies. So the governor, when, when they enacted the budget, um, at that point, if you see the bottom line, federal cares restoration. Yeah. Basically, he was saying the money at that point, they had passed the federal cares restoration act. So that money is what's making us whole. He made, he took this pandemic adjustment and is replacing it with the federal money. So you mean, you're telling me that he turned around and he said, he asked the federal government for help. When they gave the help, he lowered the state help? The yes. equal, an equal amount? Yes. Yes. That's ridiculous. What do How you think? I go on television and, and, you know, ask the federal government, does that mean if the federal government gives us more help, we're gonna lose more aid? Yeah. Well, That's exactly what it means. That, right. So if he cuts, let's say, a million dollars from us, his expectation is that the federal government will restore that million dollars. So in right. no instance, I don't believe, are we going to get more than this? I think we're just looking to be kept whole at this point. He's going to say, he's going to say cut 20%. And if he gets it back from the feds, he'll give you the 20% of the federal money. Correct. And, and this guy, this guy's a rising star. I don't understand it. Hmm. You watch his press conferences. He comes it's, across well. I don't know. I used to work in Manhattan when the guy in the corner used to play three-card Monty. <laughs> it's the same like the lottery money. They give it in one hand and they take it from the other. It's no different. I mean, it's just you know, moving money around. All right. That's... You know, they're... I think they, one of the... Um, benefits of showing this slide is, you know, our families have been working very hard uh, to advocate that we get an increase in foundation aid because we've been harmed uh, millions and millions of dollars over the years um, and not received monies promised. And uh, our, despite all the lobbying efforts, um, you know, we wanted people to transparently see that uh, not only have we not moved up, but, you know, through this crisis, of, it looks like we're having we'll be lucky to be made whole, even with the, the CARES Act money. How well, the we, upside of that, right, is that 20% of a smaller number is a smaller loss than the more. <laughs> I mean, if, if you have to, you know, look at it in a per perverse fashion, that's, I guess, the upside. Right. Does anyone that's have good. an issue if we make the slide say on the second line, NYS pandemic adjustment? So. It's very clear that the state is cutting the same amount that the federal. The whole thing is state aid. Why do you need to point it out? I mean, well, it's the federal aid. cares restoration is not state aid, and that's, that's why it says aid. federal. That's federal aid, and it says federal. But so, all the other things are state. Why would you point one out versus the rest of them? Because I would like people to see that it's the same money being taken away that the feds are giving us. I think it's clearer. Because the slide says state that. aid, but the last line is federal aid. That's possible. Okay. You know? 
just NYS pandemic adjustment. Okay. You know, I, I mean, it's all it's all NYS adjustments, but okay. Okay. Uh, so the estimated expenditures for 2021. Um, Swiss Chip announced last week um, that they would be. Oh, sorry. That they would be. Um, they were originally projecting a 3.7 percent rate increase, and they decided to reduce that to a 1.7 percent rate increase for active employees for next year. So this will save the district approximately $150,000 for next year, which is great. We could use it. Um, the district also extended the ETA's retirement incentive. And as a result, we received three additional teachers retiring and that's generating approximately $250,000 in additional savings, which is also great. We will need that. How do, how do you get to that from three teachers or is that from all of the retirements? Because three teachers, the savings between what you pay for new teachers versus the old teachers, it's not 80,000, 70 something thousand a teacher difference, is it? Sure yes, it is, it they're is. at the top of the is scale. Is it really? Wow, yeah. okay. And wow. then you had TRS and FICA on top of that and yeah, that's where we are. Okay, all right, wow. Uh, okay, uh, so also included in the budget are some small staffing increases, um, and we also may reallocate some of our existing staff to provide some better support. Right now we're looking um, to take a 10-month nurse and make it a 12-month position. We are already paying per diem um, one of our current nurses to cover, to provide us with summer coverage. So the net increase um, we're estimating at approximately $4,000. Um, we are including a 0.2 increase in special education at the high school. That's approximately a $17,000 increase. Um, and we put as a placeholder in the budget for security enhancements for next year, it's a $65,000 increase. Um, not exactly sure we will be using that money at this point, but um, it could be in a variety of different ways, but we just needed a placeholder in the budget for that for next year. Um, should anything change positively, which is unlikely, but um, the following are some of the items that were under consideration until the pandemic hit. Um, we were looking at a 1.0 ENL to be shared between Ann Hutch and Greenvale. That would be an ad of about $95,000. Um, we were looking at a 1.0 technology integration specialist district wide. That would be about $101,000. A 1.0 technology increase split between Ann Hutch and Greenvale. Um, that's also a $95,000 increase and a 0.1 music at the middle school increase for about $7,000. So potential capital projects we're looking at for next year, uh, we are, are including $1.5 million in the transfer to capital line. We are looking to do roof replacement at the high school and middle school. We have a um, good number of roofs there that haven't been replaced in a long time and are currently leaking over the middle school gym, for example. Um, and if there are any funds left over, we would use that to um, address other projects identified in our five-year capital plan. So the next steps, what we're waiting for is Friday. Um, we, are, we have been told that we will receive the budget revision on Friday. Therefore, we have scheduled our budget adoption to be on um, Tuesday, May 19th, where we can make any adjustments if necessary after the May 15th budget revision. And our budget, uh, public budget hearing is scheduled for May 27th at 8 p.m., another virtual meeting. The budget vote and trustee election is by executive order this year to be moved to June 9th. It's by 100% absentee ballot only, no in-person polling locations. However, we will set up a drop box in front of the district office if people do not feel comfortable or if there's not enough time to put their, um, their vote in the mail. They may come by the district office and place it in a drop box that we'll have out front. Um, ballots must be received by 5 p.m. on June 9th to be counted. We, it doesn't matter if they come in the next day, they were postmarked, we, they have to be in our hands by 5 p.m. on June 9th. So that's it. Any questions? Will this um, PowerPoint be put up on the district website? Yes, it, right now it's up on board docs, so people can access it there, but we will put it on the website as well. Great, thank you. And just a note about the um, security enhancements uh, that you're sort of looking into that right now and working with Alteris to sort of identify the areas of greatest need, correct? And that's why it's- Correct, not since, yes, we've been, we've pulled together a, uh, a uh, an emergency uh, management team 
um, across the district for the first time really unifying all of the uh, building level teams and looking at a uh, list of prioritized action items. And as part of that, we were doing a review, having Altaris do a review of current staffing and, uh, making, and, and just looking at the overall system. And uh, we're looking in very short order for them to make uh, some recommendations as to whether we have you know, the right levels of staffing and, and what might need to be done or other, other things that could be helpful that we're not currently doing. So it's, um, we're looking for those recommendations uh, from our professionals and uh, they will guide the use of that placeholder that we have there. Great, thank you. And thanks, mm -hmm. Lisa. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. Thank sure. you. Lisa's been terrific in navigating this. She stays really well connected politically and really well connected to um, colleagues in the region. And because of that, whenever we get information that is, uh, it's been, I mean, information in this, Arena has been hitting us hard and fast, it's just been coming like, you know, daily and weekly, uh, you know, through executive orders or through, um, you know, channels at the state level filtering down through our legislators and so forth. And she's uh, able to get to the, to the heart of the matter and really uh, help us all be able to make good decisions um, in real time. So really appreciate Lisa's um, great attention to detail and, and this has been a challenging season. So thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Great. Okay. Moving on, um, be it resolved that the Board of Education approves the minutes of the April 21st, 2020 meeting. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Do you need a second or? Oh, I'm sorry. I do need I'll a second. second. Thank I'll you. Second it. Questions or discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. It's a unanimous vote. Um, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the personnel agenda as attached. Can I have a second? I'll second. 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 Thanks, Vito. Um, discussion, questions? I got a question. Uh, I'm going to ask that we could vote on the retirement incentive separately uh, because I'm not in favor of that. Never are. Uh, I think the people would retire anyway. We're just giving money away. Well, so we're not voting on an incentive. We are voting. We're just voting on yeah. improving their retirement. Yeah. Just pull it out. I, I, I'll second his motion to pull it out and vote on it separately. Any questions or discussion? All in favor of voting on the retirements of the personnel agenda separately? Oh, you don't, you don't have to vote on that. You, we don't? No. Okay. No. Right. Now we'll just vote on you the do personnel agenda. All right, all right. Just all right. so all in favor of voting on the personnel agenda minus the retirements? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, it passed Aye. unanimously. Now, all in favor of voting on the retirements that are included in the personnel agenda? Aye. 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 Uh, I got a question there. Are we oh, voting okay. on I'll vote to accept the retirements. I just didn't want to vote on the yeah, retirement okay. incentive. You follow? I don't have a problem with the people retiring. The memoranda of agreement. We, we have a memorandum. Yeah, it's the MOA. That's what I have the Okay. Idea. Yeah. So you're voting on the MOA now. We already voted all right, on it. All in favor of voting on the MOA for the retirement incentive. Aye. Do I need to go through and get everybody's vote? All in favor? No, I mean, Aye. I think the only one nay is Vito. I'm a nay. Two, I'm a nay. Well, I only saw three hands go up. This could be something. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Two. Two, op two opposed. Is that correct? Three. Yes. Correct, Steve and I. Okay. Aye. All right. Sorry for the confusion on my part, since we had already, I thought, voted on retirements in January, but okay. 
Be resolved, moving on, that the Board of Education hereby approves the placements as recommended by the Committee on Preschool Special Education and the Committee on Education. I'm gonna go through through eight. Be it resolved that the Board of Education approves the student transportation agreement with first student and that the Assistant Superintendent of Business is authorized to execute the agreement on its behalf. Be it resolved that the Board of Education approves budget transfers of $10,000 or over for the month of April 2020 as attached. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby approves the following health service contracts as attached. Be it resolved that the Board of Education accepts the following warrants as attached. Can I get a second, Tara? I second. Thank you. Second. Any questions or discussion? I'd like to vote separately on the transportation agreement. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, let's vote on everything that I just moved except for the transportation agreement which is 8.1. So we're voting on 7.1, 8.2, 8.3, and 8.4. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Okay, now we're voting on the approval of the Student Transportation <laughs> Agreement 8.1. Do we need any discussion first? Uh, I'll just say that the reason, the reason you've already heard it for anybody else who's listening, uh, I don't believe we should be paying anything for services not provided. And I know that we are extending the agreement into next year, uh, but I, I think, I don't think we're getting the value that we're paying for, so I'm gonna vote against that. Okay. That's it. So, all in favor of 8.1, the transportation agreement? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Just one. One opposed. Thank you. All right, future meeting dates. We have uh, our meeting next Tuesday on May 19th. That will be, used to be a budget vote and a trustee vote, but that will be when we will approve the budget. We have a meeting also, as mentioned in the presentation, um, we have our budget hearing coming up on May 27th at 8 p.m. And that is a that will be on Zoom as well. There will be an opportunity for the public to weigh in on that one. We're gonna have a chat feature. Um, so that's a Wednesday, Wednesday, May 27th, um, Tuesday, June 9th and Tuesday, June 23rd. Any comments from the board? I just have one, am I on mute? No. I just no, have one brief one. I'm like just, to... uh, just acknowledging I'm like... you so everyone knows who's speaking, Sally. Oh. No, um, just, Thank you for joining us tonight to the uh, attendees. It's nice to have people, even though hey, we, you. I do we do appreciate people coming to these meetings. Um, I do see a lot of names I recognize, so I hope everyone is actually doing well, um, not just the board members and the administration, but everyone, all of us. I hope we're all doing well during this time, and thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. Thanks, Sally. Anyone else? Vito? Uh, I'd like to say yeah, um, our number of attendees has grown to nine this uh, meeting. I'm very impressed by that. So to all those people who are dialing in, thank you for being interested uh, and uh, stay safe. And we're doing the best we can with these meetings. It is difficult. Uh, we'd much rather be face to face, but uh, it is what it is. So hopefully one of these days soon we'll be able to meet in the auditorium or something like that. But until then, it is what it is. That's right. Um, did I miss how? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Did I miss how we're going to get the ballots? How are we going to get our ballots to vote? How are we going to get our nope. ballots? Is that what you asked? Ballot. Yes. Okay. So um, the printer. Oh. We we are um, having the printer produce all twelve thousand nine hundred ballots. Uh, they will be sent out with a postage paid return envelope and they will be going out a, day, a couple of days after you guys adopt the budget on um, the 27th. I um, mean, excuse me, the 19th. The 19th. The 19th. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, so can I just, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to, I'm going to say, uh, obviously, if people have comments or, you know, uh, Get joining the meetings. 
comments, I guess send them by email to the Board of Ed and to Dr. Glass so he can forward them on to us uh, if it relates to the budget. And just, you know, make sure you get out and vote and get your friends to, to vote as well because, you know, this may be a difficult budget season and, and it's always important that, that whatever the budget is, hopefully it'll pass and, and that our uh, parents get out there and vote. It's not getting out. It's just opening your well, mail. Put it in the mail. But the mailbox, so it's easier than ever. Yes, hopefully. But it may be easier than ever for the opposite vote as well. So just make sure, sure that you get it back in time and that the parents get the vote out. Uh, you know, it's going to be really important, super critical this year. I, I, I have a question, totally different subject. And, and I know we've we, I know we're planning lots of things, but my, my question is about graduation. And my question is, can we give any thought to possibly having a graduation, uh, maybe homecoming weekend? If we can't call it a graduation, we could call it a mock graduation of some kind so that we could do something for the percentage of kids that do make it home for Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, maybe we could do it on a Friday or a Saturday or something like that. Uh, just a thought. Yeah, I know that uh, our high school administration is giving a lot of thought to all the possibilities. Right now, um, they're leading, you know, um, certainly looking at their various digital options as primaries. But if you can do something face to face a little bit later, uh, secondarily, you know, if you could get everybody together, those are things that they, I know they've considered. So, um, in some cases, if you can do both something digital and then something um, live, that's a bonus, right? So I know they're looking at various components um, and I don't wanna get too far ahead because I'm not so sure Principal Capuano has you know, communicated all this or made final decisions on all of it, but I can assure you they're looking at a lot of, uh, a lot of good creative options to try to make sure our seniors have great experience the best that we can do at this time. Well, they're going to be unique. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. They will always remember their high school graduation, however it is. Well, we're thinking of you seniors. Um, and I just wanted to acknowledge since we're talking about the seniors, um, there is that Facebook page adopt a East Chester high school senior. And I wanted to give a shout out to the mom, the parent who is um, spearheading it, Kristen Sidari. Um, there's a Facebook page, you can adopt a senior, you can give them nice treats and surprises. I noticed that our, East, um, our ETA, the East Chester Teachers Association has adopted as of my last reading four seniors. And I saw some teachers in pictures out delivering treats today. So thank you to the ETA. Thank you to Kristen Sadari for spearheading that and to everyone who's participating. And if you want more information about how to get your senior listed um, or how to adopt a senior, um, you know, look on the Facebook page, look on the, I think the East Chester, the high school PTA sent out information, or you can even, you know, email the Board of Ed and I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up with that information if you want to get involved. But thank you to everyone who's doing that. And if you need a, a mood booster, look to the, look on the East Chester, um, look at the Adopt an East Chester Senior on the, the page on Facebook and you'll see all the seniors getting their treats and having their spirits lifted in the middle of AP exams. And it's kind of, it's really nice to see. So it's not a graduation. It's not the same, but it's a nice way that the community is getting together. Any other board comments? I yes, just had a couple comments. Um, I just wanted to say it's been really, really great to have the Google meet started um, with the different teachers and it's just a nice component to, for the kids to see their, their home, you know, their classroom teacher as well as um, the specials, but also the component of the socialization, the kids seeing their friends. There, it, just, it just encourages camaraderie. And I just, I, I encourage all the families to try. I know it's, you know, the days are very busy, but to still um, try to get onto the Google Meets. I think it'll only enhance your child's experience with you know, seeing their teachers as well as seeing their friends. And I also just wanted to um, piggyback on Cheryl. Um, I also encourage her regarding the Adopt a Senior program. Um, Kristen Sidari has been very, very awesome as far as communicating. And I've adopted Brendan Murray, who's one of our cameramen. 
for the board of ed, and he also works for me through City of Yonkers. So I'm excited about this new journey too, and um, I just think it would be great for the community to be involved and to, to adopt a senior if they can. Thank you. Any other board comments? Uh, I just got to ask Judah where he got his hair cut. <laughs> My wife and a wall clipper. <laughs> okay. When I come over, I'll wear a mask. <laughs> My hair hasn't been this long since college. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. It looks good, Vito. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, there's a lot of it. <laughs> I see. I see a ponytail starting. It's gonna start. I see it. I'm gonna have it curling up in the back. There you go. <laughs> Any other board comments? Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Uh, Steve, seconded by Sally. All in favor? Aye. Uh, there's no Aye. exact, right? What's that? There's no, no exact, exact, right? No exact. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank Thanks, everybody. Be well and safe.